I am uh, Jeff Howland, and this is the sixth episode of uh, How to Human, the How to Human series. And uh, once again, the purpose of the series, just to restate it, is that you know we're all learning how to be good humans, how to how to human, and so that's kind of uh, the purpose of the talks is to discuss my efforts in that. Since uh, what else could I talk about but my own thoughts and efforts? And so um, that's what this is. That's what the series is called. That it's not uh, an instruction manual as I know how to do it and you don't or something like that. It's uh, it's in search of the exploration of and um, with a goal of being able to human well. So uh, this talk is about value systems and systemic thinking. It's sort of the first of the more technical talks that I'll give, but um, it'll be you know, for me, technical things are because they're detailed and they're accurate, uh, not because I try to use words that uh, most people wouldn't know. I pretty much try to uh, stick with general general knowledge words uh, as opposed to too to explicit uh, and of uh, industry terms. And, and when I drop into industry lingo, I try to explain it. So I don't mean technical in that sense. Um, but value systems and systemic thinking are, are tools, mental tools. And... Um, they're ones that I use a lot, and so I thought I would introduce them early so that I could refer to them over um, the later episodes. And I don't know if people will how how these would, would possibly be consumed if people would watch them in order. But but if they do, then they'd be able to to hear me kind of build up these concepts so that they can understand them and potentially use them for themselves. Uh, since since as technology they're developed and refined, so my use of value systems and systemic thinking are not common usages of those terms. They're specific usages to me because I use them as tools and I refine them as technologies. So to me, they have many nuances and are useful in many ways uh, that I've proven over time again and again. And so um, in talking about them, I'm trying to make that available and essentially publicize the technology, take this mental technology open source and um, release it as a tool that can be used by other people. So the value systems, like what's a value system? So to me, a value system is how you judge things. So if I think something is good or bad or fast or slow, those are values. Um, I'm giving you know some adjective type description of um, uh, a thing and I'm describing it. And so it could be about a subject or, or really anything. It's like anything that you could place, anything that you could call value into uh, becomes a value system. And the system idea of it has to do with the things are connected, that you're talking about some kind of subject or topic, or um, that even if it's connected as just a, a framework that can be applied, so such as a model, if you create a model for things, um, you could have uh, things about the model, like for instance, in a model, you could care about how tall someone is, how heavy someone is, um, how fast someone can run 100 meters, and uh, you know, their, their current age, and that could be the model. And so the data in that model can be collected on people or animals uh, or uh, anything that can meet that model specification, and then it can be graphed uh, accordingly. And then you can look at the metadata associated with it, which is the other things, like if it's a people, person versus a dog, like their 100 meter things are going to be different, fall into different ranges uh, for their age categories and weight and height and so on. And so... Uh, that brings together the idea of a system and then the idea of values that the the dog or person is fast or slow that the dog is is good at at starting off the run uh but bad at finishing the run or however you wanted to um apply a value and i'm using kind of uh silly descriptions here but this this be to give it the idea that it can it's a general purpose tool it can be used on anything so this can be used on your own life it can be used in your work it can be used uh in, in any way at all. And the purpose of saying that is that it's a tool, like a hammer. It's like you can use a hammer in any way you want. It has the best tool, uh, the best utility when you hit a, a nail with it. And so you bring down the heavy weight of the hammer onto a nail. That was what it was designed for. And then you could flip it over and use the claw piece to uh, pull a nail out. And that would be the primary function of a hammer. And so the primary function of this value system is that it allows you to think about things in 
the manner that this tool works best with. And this tool works best when you think about uh, applying it as either a model to a specific topic or a model that can be applied to any topic and then you can see things based on the values that you've assigned it. Now how is that useful? Why would that matter in your life? Um, I, I would classify this under applied philosophy in that it's the love of knowledge philosophy um, Philo love and Sophia knowledge uh, wisdom the love of wisdom and so uh, you know a applying philosophy imply applying this thing to your life means it should make your life better and so when we think of these value systems which are these systems of values that we associate with things or the model that we associate with things that we can collect uh, data from and then judge them which is the value judging good bad fast slow whichever kind of uh, way you want to think about that judgment when we apply that to our real life we find ourselves all the time making judgments about things and having feelings about things and um, deciding things but but without uh, a set of tools to work on to understand those judgments um, sometimes we can make poor judgments and and I think I think I think everyone will probably say in their life they've made poor judgments and that they, if they'd had better tools, they might not have made those judgments. They might have been able to think about them in a better way. And so the concept of a value system allows you to take the judgments that you're creating, which are your values, and to apply them into this model and then to inspect the model uh, a little more objectively. So you can stand back a little bit from the model and be like, okay, what's going on with my feelings about this? And then you can switch it up and you can say, actually, like you can model someone else's feelings. Like you can take uh, a situation where there's two people involved, you and someone else, and there's a third party that you both have an opinion on and you can model your own thoughts and feelings on that opinion. And then you could use the same model and model it from the other person's perspective, the second person in the party. And then you could use the same model and apply it to the third, uh, the target of both of you and the other person's um uh, related model elements. You could model their perspective. You could model it from themselves. You could model it from them to you, from them to, to the other person so that you're modeling these different relationships and you're coming up with how you think those things would be filled out if you were to answer those questions for those other people about those topics using the same model that you filled out for yourself. And then you can compare them and see how they're different. And this allows you to get a more objective viewpoint on how someone else could see things. And so essentially, it's a tool for increasing and inspecting your own empathy and your ability to empathize with other people. And so it's an engineering approach, a technology-driven approach to thinking to create a better system of thinking to improve your empathy and improve your ability to see things from other people's perspectives. And not only your empathy, which is just your ability to empathize with other people, but also your ability to see, your ability to have a wider perspective because you move from just kind of being in the moment and having uh, feelings and, and, and thoughts into putting things into a model uh, that allows you to see things from other people's perspectives in the same depth that you have modeled your own perspective. So it's not just being in an experience, it's it's creating a model to try to understand the experience and then viewing yourself through that model to collect all that information that you might not feel in any given moment, but you can collect it by, by specifying it in the model and then attaching it to how you felt and then seeing, okay, well, if I was looking at like, was I angry at this moment in time? And it's like, I can be like, yes or no. And then did I show it to people? Yes or no. And then I could ask, was the second person angry at this point in time? Yes or no. Did they show it to people? Yes or no. And then I could ask if the third part, the third party, the person that me and the other person were dealing with, if they were upset at this time. And then I could ask them if they were happy, if they were content, if they were achieving their goals, if they were trying to do anything deceptive or, or ruthless or something like that. I can ask all these questions about the situation and then I can compile all the information and see from all the different perspectives and once I'm used to doing this, I can do this instantaneously because my mind will just come up with the answers of how I would fill that stuff in because I understand the, the system and I'm used to thinking this way. And so um, 
that's a tool. It's a technology that you can develop in your mind. And then in your mind, you can just apply the tool of let's create a model for this. And let's think about these are the important elements for this model. Um, happiness, anger, deception, truthfulness, helpfulness, um, feeling of accomplishments. Uh, and let's apply it to myself and each of the other parties. And then let's see how I feel about each of those things. And then let's see how I think they feel about each of those things. And then it takes a long time to say. And if I were to write it down or like make a computer program that would do it it would take a long time to do but in terms of just coming it up in my head in a situation it takes no time to do immediately my mind can just uh come up with all of these ideas and if they're right or wrong or whatever it's still much more information than i had before i did it and then i can think about those ideas and i can see do they seem right or wrong to me and i can make refinements on them and that's again why it's a technology because you can refine it so that's what a value system is to me uh in part because there's a lot more to it, but that's a simple like kind of first brush explanation of a value system. So um, then I'll move into systemic thinking. So the title of this episode again was value systems and systemic thinking. So systemic thinking is the second part of it. And uh, in this part, uh, you know, what's a system? So a system is a collection of things. So you could look at the entire universe as a system. You could look at just the planet Earth as a system. You could look at our solar system as a system. You could look at the United States as a system. You could look at yourself as a system. You could look at the company that you work for as a system. Uh, your computer as a system. Your operating system as a system. These are all systems in that we can describe them and we can describe them individually and we can describe them how they operate with other things. We can componentize them. Uh, like, for instance, your operating system has uh, a kernel and a scheduler and a file system. And your computer has memory and a CPU and um, probably has a screen attached to it. And you probably have networking. And, um, you know, for a person, we can break it down into uh, you have a heart and lungs and, and muscles and bones. But we can also break it down into s s uh, more functional type things, which is that you have a circulatory system that is pumping. So you have a pulse and you have um, breathing, you have respiration and you have um, movement and uh there's there's some kind of creative movement going on the movement doesn't seem to be especially deterministic you're always coming up with new movements new things to say new things to do and so uh that could also be a system so anything can be turned into a system as long as it can be looked at as a whole and so systemic thinking is turning your your thinking into seeing how all of these things are connected and seeing how the different changes in any given part of the system affect the rest of the system. Since if they're all connected, um, they do all affect each other. Sometimes once one thing changes, it doesn't immediately affect another thing because they're not uh, linked in such a way that a change in one affects the change of another. Such as that if I turn a volume knob up, uh, all of a sudden sound is getting louder. That's a directly connected system. The volume knob and the amplifier and the speaker are all connected in line. And when I change one, it changes the other. Uh, or it could be that it is... Uh, a related system. So say, for instance, if I'm in my car uh, and I'm listening to the radio and then all of a sudden the navigation system comes on, it turns the radio down and plays the navigation system on top of the, the radio. And that's an adaptive system uh, in that the radio volume changed because the navigation thing came on. And so, uh, you know, that's something that something is adapting to. Um, so that's a system as well, like the radio player portion of the car's uh, electrical system uh, was instructed by its programming code to lower the volume to a maybe 10 or 15 percent of what it previously was so it doesn't completely cut off and then it plays over the navigation voice on top of that and so that is a system and that is a systemic effect that these two things that are in that are different but are related to each other in this car's electronic uh, informational system uh, react with each other. And so in the same way, when you run, your heartbeat will start to elevate and your blood will pump faster and your lungs will work faster. And there isn't a direct correlation between your breathing rate and your heart rate. Your heart rate may hit 160 or run 20 and your breath uh, respiration, your rate of respiration may be exactly the same because that may be the pattern that you're holding. But your bronchioles would be working at a different factor and your cells um, respiration capability of bringing in oxygen uh, to complete uh, aerobic activity would be uh, working under a different uh, factor at 120 BPM heart rate versus 1 
uh, 60 BPM heart rate. And so that is a system. Those are systemic effects. They are related even though they're not directly controlled, like the volume and the, the, the audible volume, the volume knob and the audible volume from speakers are directly controlled. Those res heart respiration, the heart rate and your respiratory rate are not directly controlled, but they're very related in the system. So systemic thinking allows for that kind of stuff. So when learning uh, medical information, systemic thinking is required because if you take a medicine that alleviates one symptom, it will perhaps cause another symptom or even the alleviation of that symptom will lead to a chain of events which causes other aspects of the system to change. And so, for instance, if you take ibuprofen um, to alleviate inflammation as a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, um, prolonged exposure to ibuprofen can deteriorate cartilage in your system. So if you're taking it every day, it can cause cartilage deterioration is supposed to be one of the, uh, the effects of that. So you're using it as an anti-inflammatory, but you get this other effect of cartilage deterioration. And of course, there can be other effects that happen on a per individual basis. That's just a common one that occurs, but some people are allergic to ibuprofen um, or um, whatever the, the situation is. But that's kind of the idea of what the systemic thinking does is it treats everything that is related as part of a system and you're looking for how those changes occur. So when you combine uh, a value system and a systemic thinking, you can then take a common value system and apply it to each element in the um, set of the system that you're, that you're thinking about. And when you're doing your thinking about whether things are good or bad or how you're going to change things, you can think, if I make this change in the system, how will my value system update? And you can think, in fact, the opposite way of, I want my value system in the system for each of these elements to be updated in this new fashion. Maybe that one thing would be more ascendant and another thing would be uh, more descendant. It would be less of one thing, more of another thing, more of the thing you want, less of the thing you don't want. So in that systemic thinking manner, if I create the value system that I would like it to be, how would I need to change the system, the components in the system? What kind of force would I need to apply to them to make the system change so that the value system went from the way that it is to the way that I want it to be? And so this is a method of basically thinking through how to change things. And these are just some tools that I like to use. These are ways that I like to term them. You can think of just different ways of these same things, different terminology, uh, different words to use that uh, are better for you, uh, that make it maybe seem less technical or are just more into your kind of like style of thinking or style of expressing yourself. And, and doing so is a really good idea because it takes the idea and it makes it yours. So it's not mine anymore. Now it's your idea and you're changing it and you could change it as much as you want. And then when you tell other people about it, they could change it. And then the ideas keep getting better and then they come back to me at some point and now I'm presented with an even better idea than the one that I put out there. So that's how technology can improve as we pass it on. It happens in open source software. It can happen everywhere else too. Um, we can just keep sharing information and taking the good information we get from other people and improving upon it. So those are so, sort of an introduction to value systems and systemic thinking. I'll get into them more over time, but I think it's best to just uh, kind of hear about something and then see it get used. Uh, and then if you want to use it yourself, you'll be able to. So that was kind of my idea is to introduce it in this one as the sixth episode of How to Human so that uh, when I use it in the future, um, it's not totally new and I can build on it and maybe I can come back to it later on and uh, get into these things a little deeper because they're really quite cool. There's really neat stuff you can do with it. Um, I use it all the time in my programming uh, work and uh, generally kind of how to build skills, uh, martial arts and other kind of uh, music. There's a lot of things to improve upon. And so having value systems to be able to apply, apply to them and to have systemic thinking um, to be able to improve them really does help out. And it really helps me get over what would otherwise be plateaus so that I can improve and continue to improve rather than getting stuck in things because I can use these tools to to do so so that I can always stay proactive and I don't ever feel like, oh, why isn't anything changing? Because I can make it change by using value systems to figure out what I want and then using systemic thinking to figure out how I want to change things into being what I want. And so, um, so that's why this is applied philosophy. It's something you can use in your life. It's something I use in my life, and I'm putting it out there as a tool for people to make use of and improve. Um, feel free to ask any questions about this in the comments of wherever this is, and if I, if I see it, I will uh, try to respond. And like I said, I'll go into stuff in detail more 
in the future. Um, I think the next talk will be about misunderstanding and derision. That's what I've called uh, the next one. It'll be about communication and how people deal with ideas they don't understand and generally uh, derision, being uh, down on something, being negative about something, putting things down. Uh, and I think there's a lot of that going on. And so I'm going to be talking about it. All right. Uh, see you. Thank you.